Welcome to Welling for your spiritual health and growth. What is your life about? That's the question we are addressing throughout this series. We are processing the question with those five plus one common questions by which we learn anything at all, the what and the who and the where and the why and the when, and finally the how. What your life is about is your mission. We considered it last time, and mission is not simply a word in leadership literature. It is also not missions that we're talking about. It's not the path that you must walk every day. Mission is something deeper and longer that grabs you, gives you unity in the middle of a complicated and confused situation when you need a foundation for life, when you feel that the pressure of circumstance distracts you and disturbs you, when you are unable to control the factors that you face, whether in relationships or responsibilities. It'll give you identity. It will give you clarity. It'll give you activity. But the better and deeper the mission, you will come closer to what the Bible addresses, the mission of your life. What is your life about? Our key passage this series comes from Psalm 8. I mentioned it's one of four creation psalms even before humanity fell into sin. The original mission of mankind. I'd like to read the first couple of verses to highlight the mood of the psalm as capturing your mission and then direct you to the mission of those who belong to the Creator. Verse 1, O Lord, our Lord, how majestic. Oh, that is a mission word. I'll show you in a moment how in all the earth you have set your glory. Aha, huh, that's your mission word about the heavens. Out of the mouth of babies and infants you have established strength. That contributes to your mission. You have made human beings a little lower than the heavenly beings. You have crowned him with glory and honor. The mission word is becoming rather obvious. How majestic is your name? It is because of scriptures like these that Bible scholars and theologians have discerned the mission of the believer. The mission of the believer is the glory of God. There are several passages in the Old Testament which invite us and exhort us to give God the glory that is due to him. A little later on, we'll talk about New Testament exhortations as well to glory. Many of us are aware of the Westminster Catechism, which said the chief purpose, the chief mission, the chief end. Now, the end is not a physical end of your body. The chief mission of man, purpose, end of man, humanity is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. John Calvin said it this way, there is no part of our life or conduct, however insignificant. I want you to notice that phrase, however insignificant, every detail, any part, which should not be directed to the glory of God. It's a powerful statement. No part of your life left out of bringing God glory. It enables, it inhibits, it directs, it prohibits, it energizes and focuses your entire life to the glory of God. Now, what is glory? We talked about what is mission. Here's the other what question. What is glory in our mission glory? What is your life about? 
Well, the word glory is actually a, a metaphor, an extended metaphor in the Old Testament. The word actually stood for physical weight, like in pounds and kilograms. Biblical writers started using the word glory for that word weight because it captured many dimensions of whom and what God is to be to us. The heavy in economically poor situations are usually honored because they have the resources by which they can maintain life. They are more influential, they are seen as substantive because of the weight they carry, actually physically. Spiritually speaking, that weight concept is applied to the weight that God has in your life. The more weight God has in your life, the more influence He has in your life, and the more great He looks through your life, the more impact He has through your life. Let me capture it for you. The more weight God has in your life, the more great He looks through your life. So I've got to ask you, is God a lightweight or a heavyweight in your life? Of course, he's the number one heavyweight around. He's always been that. He's the God who created everything and owns everything and runs everything and holds everything, including your life and mine. So he might as well get the glory. Does he have weight in your life? In the details and in the broad picture, in the microcosmic corners which you try to ignore, suppress, or hide, and the very purpose that other people know you live for. Nothing is too insignificant to be brought in the direction of the glory of God. He wishes to have weight in every part of everything you do. What is your life about? That is the question of mission. Now, why you do what you do is the end of that mission, the glory of God. The 2020 Olympics, as you know, because of the global pandemic was postponed to 2021. There are many athletes who are disappointed, but some are very grateful to be there, including Kenny Harrison. Kendra Harrison was adopted as a baby. She was born two months premature. She has 10 siblings, other babies adopted in this wonderful family. She also had a heart murmur during her younger days. She did not make it for the U.S. team in the 2016 Olympics because she failed in the Olympic track and trials, finishing sixth. But in the 2021 year, she ran fast in the 100 meter hurdles and now holds the world record in the event, even though at the Olympics, she came in second. She won silver. There were many, many challenges that she faced, but she wears multiple medals from that item, that event, which is her expertise. The silver was her first Olympic medal, and she hopes to pursue much more track and field in upcoming years, but she credits her faith for her talent and success. And in humility, with gratitude. She says, this part has enabled my Christian faith to grow. Here is my first Olympics to make it on the world stage to represent my country to the best of my ability. Now, I want you to listen to what she said. All the glory goes to God just to have this opportunity. All the glory goes to God. My dear friend, God gives us many, many opportunities in every sector, every stream, every platform that you have in your life. You have the opportunity to bring glory to God, to show that He is the 
heavy weight in your life. That he will look great through your life.